Welcome back to the Berean Preterist. My name is Richard Eckhart. Today is October 18th, 2019. We're going to look at a post from Scott Russell, who is a futurist Christian who exposes covenant eschatology, corporate body view preterism. Out from Max King in the 1970s and 1980s, and whose two main disciples are William Bell and Don K. Preston. Scott Russell posted this, this uh, earlier today. He says, question, to all the resident proponents of covenant eschatology, which of the following two versions of the gospel was actually preached by the apostle Paul? A, and this is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses one through four. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached to you which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures in that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Or B, and this is a screenshot from Don K. Preston. That separation only lasted a brief time while he was on the cross. Thus, he could then say in full comfort, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The separation was over. He had paid the price. Now, like I said, that is a, uh, that is a part of a screenshot from Don K. Preston. And this is, in fact, Don K. Preston's false gospel, his false heretical gospel. And he's talking about an alleged spiritual alienation death that he said uh, Jesus died prior to any biological, physical, flesh, body, death, or burial, or resurrection. And not only did uh, this false Jesus Christ of Don K. Preston die this alleged spiritual alienation death, this false Jesus Christ was also resurrected from this alleged spiritual alienation death while he was still on the cross and before he died a biological, physical, flesh, body, death. So, I made a comment on Scott Russell's post here as he's exposing Don K. Preston, and he is challenging, challenging any covenant eschatology, corporate body view, preterism heretic to address Paul's version of the gospel and Don K. Preston's version of the gospel. And he is asking which one of these is correct. So my comment was, this, ero this erroneous idea of death that Don K. Preston and gang are teaching is well hidden when Don tries to appear as a Christian. Notice this screenshot from Don over the past 24 hours, which is a response to Julian Chambers. Don mentions the, quote, death, burial, resurrection of Christ, end quote. But Don has a completely different definition of the death, burial, and resurrection for his false Christ. Then Paul has as the one and only gospel. I'll read it again. But Don has a completely different definition of the death, burial, and resurrection for his false Christ than Paul has as the one and only gospel. Don has his false Christ, quote, die, get buried, and get resurrected, end quote, all before the physical death, burial, and resurrection of his false Christ. And Don tries to claim that the physical death, burial, and resurrection of his false Christ were all a sign of this alleged earlier, quote, spiritual death, burial, and resurrection, end quote, 
of his false Christ. What a mess Don has on his hands. Don is unfortunately unrepentant of his false Jesus Christ and false gospel prayers. And this is the next comment that I made. I said, here's the screenshot from Don K. Preston that he recently posted. Everyone must ask, what does Don mean when he mentions the death, burial, and resurrection of his Christ? It is not the same definition that the Apostle Paul has, that Scott Russell is pointing out. And when we look at this screenshot that Don posted within the past 24 hours here, he says in response to Julian Chambers, he said, not sure I communicated clearly, perhaps. I essentially said that as a result of that one-time event, and pay particular attention to what Don says right there, because I'm going to dig into that a little bit. Don says that one-time event, he says, I essentially said that as a result of that one-time event, there are eternal results, just like the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. That is most assuredly a one-time for all time. That is most assuredly a one-time for all time, never to be repeated or needed event. Correct? With a question mark. The fulfillment of that one time for all time event has eternal consequences, results, and blessings, or curses for the disobedient. Now that sounds, if a, if a Christian was reading that, they would be suckered into what Don... Don K. Preston is trying to sell out from his heretical false Jesus Christ and false gospel. And this is the third comment that I made. I said, Scott Russell, part of Don K. Preston's smoke and mirrors trickery is that he calls what he claims happens in the first century, quote, an event, end quote. This event that Don K. Preston has is a 40-year dying and rising exchange process. Notice how Don capitalizes the letters in death, burial, and resurrection when mentioning this event that he has. This event of Don K. Preston is an alleged raising of his spirit Christ with a spirit body. Over a 40 year process. Between the cross and AD 70. I'll read that again. This event of Don K. Preston is an alleged raising of his spirit Christ with a spirit body over a 40 year process between the cross and A.D. 70. Don does not mean what happened in the physical death, burial, and resurrection as this event that he is referring to. Don has many components to this event that he has as it concerns a 40-year resurrecting and salvation process. But Don tries to sound and appear as a Christian when discussing his event. It is sheer dishonesty. And Scott Russell says, I'm not surprised, but it has been over two hours and not one single proponent of covenant eschatology has the intestinal fortitude to step up to the plate and answer the original post. 
How about it, Don K. Preston, Holger Neubauer, Robert Buno, Steve Baisden, Roy Runyon, William Bell? Which of the two statements in the original post is the gospel that Paul preached? And which of the two is another gospel taught by Don Preston? It was years ago that I went up against Larry Siegel. Larry Siegel spent time, he, at one time he was online a lot on the various groups, and I'm going back years. Uh, Larry Siegel was at that time a minion and a lackey for William Bell and Don K. Preston. He was part of the inner circle at that time, uh, but that has since changed, and Larry Siegel does not show up uh, Pretty much he never shows up, but once in a while he'll, he'll post a comment. Um, I think he checked out of the scene and, and got married and uh, packed it all in. I think it was getting a little, little too much for him. Uh, he definitely is, he's, uh, he's deceptive, but not as snake-like as uh, William Bell and Don K. Preston. He doesn't, he doesn't have the intestinal fortitude to uh, keep up with what is getting exposed over the past five to seven years when it comes to covenant eschatology getting exposed. And uh, Larry Siegel and I went through this same uh, dialogue or discussion or debate, if you will. And I have that uh, conversation uh, recorded. Uh, I have the text of that conversation uh, saved. And I'll, I'll get into that at one point in the future. But I was trying to uh, get out of Larry Siegel what this uh, event that they have this particular uh, dying, rising reciprocity. And Larry Siegel was just dancing and dodging and pivoting. And uh, he was just not wanting to give up the goods when it comes to Max King's 40-year uh, dying, rising reciprocity, which is uh, not just uh, what happened on the cross or in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the, the real gospel, the physical death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, but this idea that there is a spirit Christ who changed back into uh, pure spirit and he then had a spirit body that was forming out from uh, either one body, according to Max King, or three bodies, according to Don K. Preston and his new teaching about three corporate bodies. Um, so to wrap up this video, I want to look at two Screenshots from Don K. Preston when it comes to this 40-year event. It is not a one-time event per se, but Don, when, when Don says that this is a one-time event, he's talking about the 40-year dying, rising reciprocity, the death, burial, and resurrection, which is made up of many components because this spirit Christ who ended up having a spirit body, allegedly, this spirit body of this spirit Christ head needed to be raised, which is essentially Don K. Preston saying that this spirit Christ was being raised because the spirit body of this ethereal spirit Christ head was being raised, which Don is saying is this raising of Christ over a 40-year process, uh, which the end of this one-time event or the end of this 40-year process was allegedly in AD 70 when this alleged spirit body of this ethereal spirit Christ head was allegedly risen from the dead. So Don has multiple deaths of his Christ and um, multiple risings, if you will. So here's a screenshot. Don, Don K. Preston says, Lance Conley, Margaret Barker, widely considered one of the top authorities on the ancient temple, uh, he's quoting from a book uh, at this particular point that Margaret Barker wrote, who is a blatant Gnostic, New Age mystic. I can't even believe that Don K. Preston is going to her for anything whatsoever. But this shows you how far out these guys are. Uh, and the book he's quoting from is Gate of Heaven, The History and Symbolism of the Temple in Jerusalem uh, from Sheffield Phoenix Press, written in 2008. And this is the quote from Margaret Barker that Don K. Preston is affirming. The high priest's garments represented his humanity. When he entered the most holy place, he put off those garments. 
When he entered the most holy place, he became God. And that is in quotes. He became God. He became like the angels. And that's the end of the quote from, from Margaret Barker that Don K. Preston is validating and affirming. Uh, and then he says, Philo agreed, Clement of Alexandria agreed, and Josephus evidently agreed. Um, and then he goes on to say to Lance Conley, he says, perhaps you should study a bit more, or perhaps you should study, study a bit before making claims like this. Uh, the high priest is supposed to stay a human. So Don K. Preston is saying that uh, the high priest that was in the... Uh, the temple rituals throughout Israel's history, when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, he became God. He put off his garments of flesh and he became God. And uh, he's even letting Lance know you should study more before you make such a uh, comment as, before you make a claim such as the high priest is supposed to stay a human. This is, this is insanity that Don K. Preston is even bringing any of this up. And then he also says right here at the end of this comment, he says, not the way the ancients thought, which is, which is Gnosticism and esotericism and mysticism. Uh, Don K. Preston, is he's in a bad way when it comes to interpreting things from a uh, Gnostic or esoteric or mystic way. And then the second screenshot that goes along with this that proves that Don K. Preston's false Jesus Christ stopped being a human being and he changed back into God allegedly after he allegedly appeared, only appeared as a human being for 30 years, which is a form of docetism or docetism. Uh, so this, this docetism that Don has, is just a twisted form of docetism, but it's the same thing where uh, the false Christ of Don K. Preston only appeared as a human being for 30 years and then allegedly changed back into pure spirit and became God after appearing as a human being for 30 years. So let's read this last screenshot from Don K. Preston as he is addressing uh, Mark Cox. He says, he says, Mark Cox, what a stunning refutation that you and Sam Frost have offered here, guys. I am blown away. Laugh out loud, laughing out loud. Uh, criticism, ridicule is all you have though. So carry on. And this is, this is Don in his bluster thinking that he is some kind of authority to speak into these situations. And he's not. He's not even a Christian. But he's trying to um, manifest some type of uh, boldness and, and authority and uh, you know, the fact that he says that he is blown away, um, this is, it's, it's sad. It's sad that you've got this, uh, uh, you know, you've got this guy who is uh, trying to just rip people down uh, by uh, claiming to be some type of authority and saying, look, I'm blown away. Well, Don, we are all blown away at your heresy and blasphemy, just so you know. We're blown away that you have a false Jesus Christ and you have a religious business that is propped up out from this false Jesus Christ. So Don continues. And this goes along with the last screenshot from Don K. Preston that I shared. He says, okay, so even though Jesus would have fulfilled the high priestly actions of, quote, putting off the garments of the flesh, end quote, and putting on the garments of glory. And even though he was offered as a sin slash burnt offering, which demanded total consummation of the sacrifice, none of that matters, because for you guys, he must remain in the flesh, blood, and bone body. And uh, Don argues with the futurist guys right here because Mark Cox and Sam Frost are futurists. And in fact, they do say that Jesus remains in the flesh, blood, and bone body. Uh, although they would probably argue the bone part of that, but they, they would say that Jesus ascended into glory in heaven with his biological, physical flesh body, which he has right now. Now, as an individual body view 
uh, full preterist, which I am, I'm an individual body view uh, full preterist, as well as Ed Stevens. And I know that Ed Stevens believes uh, similarly here with what I believe. Uh, both Ed Stevens and myself, as individual body view full preterists, we do not believe that Jesus put off his garments of flesh. We do not believe that uh, Don's quote is divested and destroyed. We do not believe that Jesus divested, divested and destroyed his biological, physical flesh body. And Don K. Preston teaches, uh, right along with Alan Bondar in a book that Alan Bondar wrote, that when Jesus, this Christ, this false Jesus Christ of covenant eschatology and covenant creation, Alan Bondar is a covenant creation adherent that Don K. Preston has intimate fellowship with and, ha and has invited to his, uh, his uh, yearly get-together. Uh, they teach that this false Christ that appeared as a human being uh, went to uh, heaven and divested and destroyed and his biological, physical flesh body was actually burned up in heaven. And he, uh, as, as Don K. Preston has said in these past two screenshots, quote, putting off the garments of the flesh, just like he says about the high priest that was in the temple rituals within the nation of Israel, put off the garments of flesh and became God. Uh, so he is saying that the, this uh, false Christ of covenant eschatology put off the garments of flesh as he appeared as a human being for 30 years and he became God. He changed back into pure spirit. And at this particular point, since he did not have a biological, physical flesh body, allegedly this false Christ of covenant eschatology was forming a spirit body because now this false Christ is pure spirit head uh, this, this Christ that Don has that showed up on earth for 30 years as a human being. Uh, he, is a, he is a pure spirit head of a pure spirit body. And they even go as far as saying that there is pure spirit blood that is not literal physical blood in this alleged spirit body being shed. And this pure spirit body is being formed out from a corporate body of Adam or a corporate body of Israel. Or in the case of Don K. Preston, he has three corporate bodies, a corporate Gentile body and a corporate Jew body and a corporate Israel, 10 Northern tribes uh, body. These are all what Don K. Preston call uh, mortal flesh bodies. Uh, so, man, this is bad stuff. This is some, this is some bad theology. It's some bad religion. There's no way around it. Uh, so hopefully you could see in, in starting out this video, I wanted to explain that Don says he has an event that him and, and uh, William Bell and Larry Siegel and uh, John Watson and Holger Neubauer and Steve Bazden and Ward Fenley and Michael Miano and Daniel Rogers, all of these guys would celebrate what they are calling an event. And they make it sound like it was a once and done, like Jesus going to the cross for a, a propitiation death on the cross. But no, they don't celebrate the death of Jesus that Christians celebrate. Since they are in a cult, they're in the Max King cult, they celebrate this 40-year, this alleged 40-year dying and rising reciprocity, which is another word for exchange. And that's a term that Max King coined. Dying, rising, reciprocity. This 40-year process where there was an alleged corporate body of old creation death, or in the case of Don K. Preston, there are three corporate bodies of old creation death. Going through a 40-year process, this is, the, this is the event that Don K. Preston is talking about. This 40-year process of conforming and transforming into a spirit body of this ethereal spirit Christ head that is no longer uh, the human being, individual man, individual person in glory in heaven that Christians celebrate. This is why Don K. Preston has another gospel. He has a false gospel. And this is why Don K. Preston has a false Jesus Christ. He does not have the same Jesus Christ that Christians have. It's as apparent as can be I'm going to keep making these videos and hopefully they're going to uh, sink in with those who are checking into uh, the covenant eschatology uh, heresy that is known as corporate body view preterism out from Max King. 
and William Bell joined up with Max King in the 1980s and Don K. Preston joined up with William Bell and Max King in the 1990s. Uh, thanks for watching today. Uh, be blessed. Love and joy. The very, the very grace that was provided on the cross through God's Son, through the sacrifice, through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that death is no other death than his biological, physical, flesh, body death. And that's why Scott Russell, as well as me, as well as myself, we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and we do not make it to be some 40-year process, and we do not make the physical death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus be a sign for some alleged deeper spiritual death that lasts 40 years for this ethereal spirit Christ head and his ethereal spirit body. Blessings to you in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace.